The MIEV, Mitsubishi Innovative Electric Vehicle. It was released in 2006 for the rest of the world. It comes to America now with a revised powertrain, and of course, it's slightly larger for our market too. But is America ready for an all-electric Mitsubishi I? Let's find out. Mork calling Orson. Come in, Orson. Mork calling Orson. Come That's in. right, you guessed it. To me, it looks like the spaceship that Mork rode in for Mork and Mindy in the 70s sitcom. Come in, Orson. We have landed in America. It definitely looks a bit like an egg, but at least it does look modern and maybe even futuristic. The engine is actually mid-mounted to make for the most passenger room possible. Note the larger rear wheels for rear wheel drive. The interior is much more practical than the exterior. It's all neutral tones with brown, black, and gray. But it looks pretty good, actually. You get one cup holder, an honest handbrake, transmission stock, of course. Down here, you can hook up your USB, and it's got kind of a vertical ventilation system. The infotainment screen is a Mitsubishi multi-communication system. You can operate your radio or navigation, and it also serves as your backup camera. US models get side curtain airbags, and you also get power windows and door locks. It's basically a pretty standard layout. I would like to have some adjustability tilt and telescoping for the steering wheel, but at least you do get to operate your radio and your Bluetooth phone on the steering wheel. The windshield wipers placement is a bit odd, but they seem to work okay. The rear seats were definitely designed for two. I guess you could fit three in a pinch if you had to. Of course, you can fold down the rear seats for a ton of storage. Here's the charging system. This is where you'll hook it up and charging time should take anywhere from 7 to 22 hours. The eye is powered by a mid-mounted 49 kilowatt synchronous motor. Power is rated at 66 horsepower and 145 pound-feet of torque. That's good for a 0 to 60 time of 13 seconds. The eye's top speed is 80 miles an hour. It's certainly not a track star, but it should be good enough to keep up with city traffic. Fuel economy is rated at 126 miles per gallon in the city and 99 on the highway. You can expect the equivalent of 112 miles per gallon overall. It's interesting to note that if you do buy the Mitsubishi I and drive it for five years, you'll be saving $9,850 over the average gas-powered car. Pretty amazing. In terms of pricing for the Mitsubishi I, you're looking at around $31,000. And you'll probably want to add the premium package to that, which is $2,790, has things like navigation, a better charging system, a backup camera. And so you'll want that. You might also want the two-tone paint job. That's $300. And uh, with that, you're out the door around $35,000. And there are, of course, other alternatives in the electric car market. You could go for the Ford Focus or the Nissan Leaf, but those actually are not quite as efficient. They do go about 10 miles further in terms of range, but they cost seven and ten thousand dollars more. So that's a bit of a trade-off. You also have the Chevy Volt and the Toyota Prius, which are plug-in and also gas-powered. But the Prius only lasts 11 miles before it runs out. The Volt, I think, is the better of those two. And that one will go about 40 miles before it switches over to gasoline. So those are good alternatives if you need that long-term range, but they are a bit more pricey. With this one, if your commute is about 50 miles a day or less, I think you'll be good and it makes great economical sense too. It's really a car you can live with every day. It's got navigation, it's got heat, 
it's got air conditioning, it's got everything you really want. You can control the radio on your steering wheel, you can link up your Bluetooth phone with it. So it's actually a sensible car and it feels just like any other normal car. Even the transmission is pretty normal feeling and it does what it should do. Not real fast, but it gets you where you're going. So I drove about 36 miles yesterday and when I got home, my range was about 11 left. That means about 47 miles was my total range, not 63, but I did have uh, the heat on low at least a little bit of the time. And uh, even with the fan off with the heat on, I think it does drain a bit of the power. But I charged it up overnight and it's as good as new today with a 63 mile range. Well, there's not much to speak of in terms of performance and handling, but you do have larger tires in the back and rear-wheel drive, so you actually have a sports car layout. Unfortunately, you don't have sports car speed. This one's even slower than the Prius, but it's surprisingly nimble through the turns. Um, you don't feel like you're going to topple over or slide out of control or anything like that, but um, it's certainly not a sports car, but it feels peppy enough for city travel, and that's what it's made for. Here's a night look of the eye, right on the steering wheel, and the center stalk there. Nice. So the question remains, is America ready for a plug-in electric like the Mitsubishi I here? And I think the answer is definitely yes. You know, this is a car that's easy to live with. If you commute less than 50, 60 miles a day, then it does everything you want it to do. It might not be the fastest car out there, but hey, that's not what this car is about. What it's about is being able to not use any gas. Forget about $3 a gallon, $4 a gallon, whatever it is, and uh, just plug it in at night. You know, drive your routine during the day, plug it in at night, and uh, you'll be happy. If for some reason that doesn't work for you, then there are other great options. I don't think there's any reason that people aren't driving hybrids or electric cars these days. The Prius is an excellent car and you can get it in small version, the Prius C, or of course the standard version or even the minivan version. So uh, check out my review of those. Another great alternative would be the Chevy Volt. And that one, you can drive cross country in it if you want and just charge it when you can. So that gives you the best of all worlds. And if you really want a sports car, then hey, there's a lot of alternatives for that too. Tesla makes a great plug-in electric, Fisker Karma, you know, there's a lot of them out there also. And if it's luxury you want, well, look to Lexus, you know? The LS and the GS are awesome. I've also previously tested those, and uh, they're amazing cars. But whether it's the Mitsubishi I here, or the Nissan Leaf, or the Ford Focus, or Kia Hybrid, Hyundai, whatever it is, I think if you're a two-car family, one of those cars should be plug-in electric or a hybrid. If it was, then we would be a lot less dependent on foreign oil, and I think our country would be better off in the long run. I'm driving Ivan Katz.